Hi folks, Dom Lawson here, reporting from Oakland, California. Uh, I'm here with Logan Mader, who is uh, several days into uh, being a member of Machine Head again, after a very long time. Um, uh, how are you feeling? Has it been a, has it been a strange experience to... It's... To come uh, after? Is it how many years? 20? 20, 20, well, I left the band in... Yeah, it's been over 20 years since I've played in the band. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, so... I'm here for the birthday party. <laughs> yeah. It feels amazing. Um, I'm really excited. I'm really grateful. And uh, still feels like not real. It's like feels surreal. And uh, trying to get my head around it. So much going on. And uh, I talked to Rob about it about six weeks ago or eight weeks ago. Yeah. And I said, yes, I want to do this. And then I talked to his manager, Joseph, and he said, uh, this is going to be great, but there's don't get your hopes up all the way. There's still a couple things to sort out, like uh, you know, availabilities and things to wrap up, and then moving parts to make this tour happen. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, so it was about seven days ago that Rob said, "Hey, Logan, can you be in Oakland in a week?" Yeah. And, and that's when I knew that it shit got real, and uh, <laughs> I started to believe it for real, and started to, you know, get excited and like, holy shit, it's like mind blowing for me. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, excited, happy. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a lot of good vibes and basically a birthday party worldwide. Yeah, you know, celebration of something that was great 25 years ago, and it's still great today. Fortunately, you know, uh, I'm really grateful for that, and uh, a lot of that reason that it's still relevant today, I think, has to, to do with the fact that Rob has kept this thing alive and yeah. strong for two and a half decades, so. When you guys kind of uh, were in the room together playing for the first time since, I mean, with, with Chris as well, for the first time since 95? Yeah. I mean, well, what was that like? Did it, I mean, how quickly did it, did it come back to you? And I mean, obviously you know the songs, but you've not been playing them for 20 years, so. Um, well, it felt surprisingly familiar, mm. you know? Uh, it felt really good. Chris was on fire, and um, I, the first, yeah, it, it was just great to see Rob, and he was, um, and to be in that room and play those songs was amazing, like a really treat for me, and like, uh, that's the vibe of, of this, it's going to be really fun, and uh, good vibes, and we're going to walk away from it all, smiles and hugs, and no yeah. drama, and, you know, just celebrating something that's great. And yeah, that's it. and has it been, I wonder, because you obviously were out of the band for all that time, um, and you know, this is a, a kind of a one-off celebration that will last as long as it lasts. Yeah. But it's spe it's specific to this album and this time and all yeah. the rest of it. But when you were out of the band, did, did you observe? What did you pay attention to? What Machine Head were doing, or kind of? I, I just wonder what it's like, you know, seeing a band evolve when you were fun right. a fundamental part of it when it started. Yeah. yeah then, from outside perspective, uh, well, I didn't speak with Rob for about five years after I left the band. And then one day he called me in 2003, just out of the blue, and called me to say that wanted to let me know that he wasn't mad at me anymore because we had, you know, things we had yeah, of course. friction yeah, yeah. and stuff. And that was a really good phone call. I was really happy to receive that. And then we've been on friendly terms ever since then. So uh, Machine Head would come on tour through LA, and I would be invited to come see them. And I would go pretty much every time they would come through town. I would come and see them play and yeah. hang out and. It was all good vibes, and it's been like that for the last 16 years. Yeah. Um, but I do remember the first time I saw them live, it was on Through Ashes of Empires and uh, in L.A. at House of Blues, and I was like, wow, Rob, this is a fucking good band, and I never... <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, and Rob was a really, really good front man, and I knew he was good, obviously. Of like course. It wouldn't have worked like it did if he wasn't, but... I never experienced it from the front with the power of the PA and the energy coming right at you. Yeah, and I remember that stuck out in my head, and um, that was that was cool to see. And uh, you know, he's just been killing it ever since. Um, yeah, it's much different than you know being on stage and seeing it from the side view, and you know, mainly just seeing the crowd as opposed to seeing the band. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it was that was a cool experience.
This is one of, when you, as you say, you didn't you haven't had a vast amount of time to kind of be learning, this, relearning the songs, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, are there any that have been particularly challenging? I mean, obviously these are all songs you can play because you played them previously, but I just wonder if there are any in particular that were kind of like, oh, this, um, is, a, this is a challenge. For me, um, I'm feeling almost pretty good about it all. I mean, I'm a little bit self-critical and hard on myself, but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's, I think I'm a better guitar player now than when I was in Machine Head, because I've been playing and yeah. doing music and stuff. Uh, but mostly rhythm, like the doing lead guitar, I did an, on that record, I did a bunch of lead guitar, a, a mm. few, and that's, not, that's a little bit challenging because it's not something I do all the time. And yeah. I've uh, just been focusing on putting in the time to feel it and you know, do it justice and do, yeah. it, do it better. I want to do it better than you know, what I did back then. You know, just, I think it's uh, possible, and it's like it, it deserves that energy and the time put into it to, uh, yeah, you know, to nail it like that. So yeah, are you are you? Con I wonder if you. I mean, I imagine you all are to some degree, but are you conscious of the, the kind of uh, the significance of this album? You know, because I think when people think about when people talk about metal in the '90s, they often have a kind of fairly negative slant on it, as if there was you know a handful of bands, but essentially grunge and these other things took over and metal really suffered. But actually, it was a very strong and fertile period the first few years of the 90s. I just wonder, you know, do you have a sense of that? Well, it, for me, it was like, it was a very important time in, in metal because I was yeah. there living. Yeah, <laughs> because you were involved. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Um, and looking back, and I've, I've just, because of what I've heard from people, I've he I hear it often, like that Burn My Eyes is a really important album. And uh, I hear that. You know, from a lot of musicians, and I've uh, I've read it in some press about it being like the one of the top ten most influential metal albums of the '90s. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, wow, okay. Um, I'm not sure what to what to say about that, other than like I'm like just stoked to to have been a part of it. You know. And, yeah. Yeah. Do you think you've all changed as people? I mean, you've only spent a few days. I mean, obviously you've been in touch with Rob and stuff, but you haven't seen yeah. Chris for a while. I mean. That, that, do you snap back into the the old ways, the old personality mix, or is or is? Yeah, I mean, it feels really familiar in a lot of ways, but it's mm. really clear that both of them have grown a lot as people. But the same core is still there, and it feels really familiar. And uh, talking about things that happened back then that I hadn't remembered or thought about, it's like it's pretty cool to reminisce and yeah. old inside jokes coming up and just like <laughs> laughing my head off because of like. You know, and I haven't things I haven't thought about for a long time. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty amazing. As a last question, then, uh, what are you most looking forward to about the tour? Aside from obviously playing shows, that's a given. But I mean, it's you know, oh. it's, it's a it's a big old, you know, it's going to be around the world and you know playing to a shitload of people, probably a lot, an awful lot of people who you obviously you've not played to before as a member of Machine Head. You know. And yeah, I'm looking forward to. Uh, Perceiving what it's like to be in Machine Head in 2019 because mm. I'll get to do that. I know they have a lot of fans that are like way too young to have experienced Burn My Eyes, and you know maybe they know about it. So it'll be nice for them to see this version, of, you know, like a reinventation or a reinventing I think of this. Made up a word. I, really. <laughs> I just reinvented I like a it. word. <laughs> um, yeah. So new fans to see this, me to see that, and yeah. The whole adventure and like camaraderie and you know, kind of reliving the get to relive something that was great, you know, for, yeah. for a few months or whatever it is. And looking forward to the whole adventure. Fantastic. Thank you, Logan. Thank you. Cheers, man.